Hi guys, my name is Emily D. Simone with the Garden State Film Festival and here with me today I have director Laura Angstadt of the film The Inevitable. Laura, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So Laura, do you want to tell our live viewers a bit about your film? Well, The Inevitable, it's about change, you know, like how life changes, um, how people change, how uh, people should embrace change and not be afraid of it. Um, I say, I, I always think of change of like, it's one of life's hardest, but uh, most important opportunities. So, and I want people to uh, see it as that instead of seeing it as like this scary thing. So yeah, I would say it's all about that. And what would you say inspired your writing for this? I actually had a, I had a couple things that inspired the writing. Um, and one of them being, um, a quote from a show I really enjoyed called Amphibia and the other one being the song like from a Disney movie the song just around the river bend from Pocahontas uh, you know the both main characters in those shows and films they view change as leading you to bigger and greater opportunities in life and it just really got me thinking of how I view change that's awesome I mean like yeah as someone that's out of high school, I feel like my life has had so much change thrown upon me. So, you know, I can definitely connect with that, that message. When you, like, when you did this, you know, like, how was your process with directing and whatnot? Like, when did you direct The Inevitable? It wasn't real. like, this whole film, it really wasn't about directing for me. It was really just, like, it was really, I'm, I was really directing myself. I really wasn't directing others. It was really just a bunch of, of random clips thrown together, but they all, like all the clips that you see in them, they all match the theme of change. So, and they all match the theme of life changing around you. But I mean, yeah, most of them, it's just uh, like every time I film some, it's just like, oh, does it, does this look pretty? Does it look cool? Cause when it does, I just like, I just take out my camera and then I film it. Literally, I don't go to, uh, I didn't go to any specific location to film for this little short film. It was really just whenever I got the chance or if any of my old clips from the past looked really awesome or really pretty, uh, then I would put it in the film. That's awesome. Well, that's art. You know what I mean? Like that, that is art, seeing something and wanting to just have it documented, whether you're taking a photo or a painting, anything like in that sense. So when did you end up, I guess, completing this then? So, cause you're saying you did some filming over a sporadic, at sporadic times and whatnot. So when did this all come together? It didn't, it didn't like come together. Like, I think I started this in May of last year um like started writing it anyway um I don't think it actually got done until the end of August um uh, I remember I remember when I got done it was I think it was the day right before school was starting and I emailed it to my teacher Miss Dorado <laughs> to look at it because she usually gives me good advice on things and as soon as she watched it she emailed me back and she was like, this is definitely a film festival film. And she asked me if she could play it to the class the next day. And I was like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> like, I, I'm like, you guys are already giving me a heart attack watching these, watching my films over again. Cause I don't really like watching my films over again with other people around for some reason. I guess it's just nerve wracking. But I mean, she, I think on parent teacher night, she, she was like, Laura's the only one that, hands me a film on the first day of school <laughs> but, no, but you know, I I like to, yeah but it's like I like to um I like to keep my passion alive throughout the whole year no matter what I'm doing uh, you know it's just all that no I mean and you should absolutely be proud you know because really you know like I've worked with Mr. Rado I think that she really values great work and she's honest so the fact that you know <laughs> she was like so like happy and proud of it like immediately so it's, that's fantastic you know uh, and so you know with that um what is it that you want your audience to take away from the film when they do watch the film 
I mean, I just hope to inspire people to see to, to just see change in a different light, to not see change as something to be afraid of, but to see it as an opportunity to grow as a person and to have trust that things will be okay in the end. So yeah, I would just say that. And is this your first time submitting to the Garden State Film Festival? No, I, I submitted um, two years in a row. I submitted my sophomore year of high school and the last year, which was my junior year. Uh, I think my, my first year was a narrative about filmmaking. Um, and then this the last year was a documentary about uh, a, f a friend of mine, about me and a friend, how we became friends. And then you got this year with a little narrative that I put together over the summer. So, yeah. Well, welcome back. And mm -hmm. I take, you know, that was it Miss Dorado that showed you about the festival? Oh, yeah, of course. It was Miss Dorado. <laughs> she, I, she, that's how I, I got along with it. Yeah. <laughs> but she, uh, I mean... She always tries to get me out there. Uh, she saw it as an opportunity my first year. She, I think she like she told me to give it a try. And I was like, all right, why not? And then I ended up getting in. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, I just remember being so proud of myself because it just shows how much I've grown as a filmmaker over the years. So yeah. when would you say that you initially got started with filmmaking? Oh, oh, God. <laughs> I remember, I think I started actually in fifth grade, but not really. It wasn't really, I didn't really start filming anything until freshman year. When I first started filmmaking, or when I first started like editing things, it was just pictures added together. And it was, it was just basic things. I did, because I just wanted to learn editing. And I thought editing was really cool. And I saw other YouTubers do it. Uh, cause I was a big, I'm still a big YouTube person. Uh, I'm a big Jacksepticeye and Markiplier fan. So I was like, Oh, I want to do what they do. So I just put pictures together that show my family and friends. Uh, and then I, once I get, when, once I got to freshman year, I started my YouTube channel actually posting things and it was, it was just vlogs at first. And then it just got into me posting short films, uh, that were made uh in school like i don't know i can't give an example but there was one about uh softball that where i had my first home run uh that was my first ever actual film that i posted and made so you started really young and so now you are a senior in high school yes <laughs> oh congratulations on you know graduating high school soon thank you what is the next step do you plan to continue in your pursuit for filmmaking? Yes, I do. I I don't know what college yet. I, I know um, I'm not going to be going to a four-year college to save money, but for my last two, two years, I'm thinking about either Drexel University or the University of Arts because I heard good things about them and I heard that there's a lot of good people. And, you know, I've, I want to continue uh, filmmaking through, through my career. So I'm excited about all my future That's endeavors. So, okay, so like with that, you know, since you are going to be pursuing it moving forward, what would you say was something that this specific film posed as an obstacle for you or like a learning experience, something that you, you learned from, something you overcame that you can apply in the future as you direct? And you know, when I first, when I first started filmmaking or just any or just any kind of editing in general I, I struggled a lot with being logical like for example if I was talking about a red rose I have to show a shot of a red rose and I, I struggled through that at, for a very long time and this was one of this was I think this was the film where I was like I got to be more artsy with my shots and just and just put random things that's why there's so many random th shots in there uh more artsy shots um so yeah I would just say just being artsy and was really hard for me just the creativity aspect yeah of it. I guess so not really having like a plan but just kind of like yeah. It. yeah just winging it just go for it just going with the flow yeah yeah absolutely so 
you know, with that, so you directed this and you edited this all by yourself? Yes. Yeah. This, I did everything by myself. You did this entire thing completely by yourself. <laughs> yes, I did. And that's so far, that's with everything I've done. I don't, I don't really have a lot of filmmaking friends yet. I mean, I, I have like friends that are in the film, obviously in my class, but you know, they're all, they're worried about like their own stuff right now, which is understandable. Uh, but uh, I don't really have any, any people that really like to just collaborate with me right now, but and I can understand why, because they are a senior and they're about to go to college. But I think the, the person that I collaborate the most is um, my good friend, Amber Hunt, which was who I made the documentary about last year. You know, she does, she's in my videos a lot and she, um, she animates for me sometimes because she's an animator. She's not a filmmaker, but yeah, she's, she's really done a lot for me, but everything, everything else is mainly just me. <laughs> hey, but I mean, like, that's fabulous, you know, because then you have like complete free reign to do what you want to do just the way that you see it but at the same time coming to this festival because you are going to be coming yeah <laughs> yeah i'm coming <laughs> you're gonna meet so many other filmmakers so many other directors actors editors the whole nine yards and you're going to make those connections and you could end up you know potentially meeting people that you'll get to work on projects with in the future so i'm actually really excited for this opportunity for you so you know, like with that said, you know, what would you say you haven't done yet that you know you want to do someday, like a goal for you with filmmaking? Oh, I'm not really sure. I I love, I love doing everything and ideas just come to me and then I just go for it. I, I don't really have a specific thing I want to do. I just, I, again, I just try to go with the flow like whatever comes to my mind or whatever, like whatever I watch, it's just inspirational. Uh, I, I try to, I just try to be creative <laughs> with everything I do. Absolutely. I mean, this is, what would you say, you know, would you say that this project that you've done, that you have the inevitable right now, would you say that this is your favorite thing you've done so far? Yeah, I would say so. I last year, everybody keeps saying that's the best thing I've made, but I, I, I don't. I think it's. I think I keep saying it's not because I, I struggled a lot with it. But this year, it was. It was more at ease. Like I, I didn't feel like I was pressured at all to make it. It was just I want to do this, and I do think it's one of the best things I've made so far. You said something about you struggled a lot with this. Struggled a lot with what the, the inevitable. Yeah, a little bit with the with just the creativity of the shots and the writing, just what I wanted to say. I have a I have a really hard time with writing. <laughs> I just want to say that sometimes I need a little bit of help. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a writer. I I'm really just like I can write scripts, but I can't write voiceovers very well because I don't have like that that writer's mind, you know. <laughs> no, but I mean like sometimes like like something like that's amazing won't always come super easily you oh, know yeah. and so i mean if you don't like writing and you figured that out you know you don't have to but at the same time you know maybe one day you'll you'll want to write something and that's totally like okay and that's cool and so you know i'm really looking forward to meeting you in person you said that you are coming yeah um, so oh, i'm like i'm actually like this is <laughs> What is something that you want to say about your film real quick, I guess, before we jump off? Uh, I, I just I just really hope people get inspired from it. I, I just hope that they like again, they they get inspired by it and just see, just uh, see change as a growing opportunity. Uh, and again, just trusting uh, the future and trusting yourself, just trusting change and and just going with the flow. I just hope that they trust all of those things once they watch the film. Well, Laura, thank you so much for joining me today. 
I look again so forward to meeting you in person. You guys, you can all go see The Inevitable in the Kingsley Ballroom on Saturday, March 25th from 9.30 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. And you can get your tickets online at gsff.org so, slash tickets. So, everybody, um, Laura, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I, I'm so excited for your film. And congratulations on getting accepted. Thank you so much. Bye.